Three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. Good morning and welcome back to Lighthouse Live. I am your host, Jordan Devitt. And listen, I am so happy that you have joined me today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad or let us be glad and rejoice in it. Listen, I just want to thank Pastor Ann, the senior pastor, for allowing us to have this radio ministry and touching people all throughout the world. I love you, Pastor Ann, I honor you. And also, I want to encourage you all to share this message so that someone can hear, hear the Word of God preach and just allow it to touch your souls all throughout the world. I am here this morning with my sweet wife, Gianna. Hello. Gianna, you look so nice today. Oh, thank you, Jordan. You How too. are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here, and I pray that this message blesses you all and that we are surrendering to the Holy Spirit and that anything that may be um, stopping you from hearing this message would just would it, would not hinder you from receiving a word today. I think that this word is really going to bless you, and I'm really excited that Jordan brought me on here. I feel so honored to be part of this. Yes, absolutely. And I wanted to make sure the first um, woman that I brought on here was my sweet wife. That is so <laughs> respectful and thoughtful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so today we wanted to minister to you all about going above and beyond. Um, this is something that I believe is so crucial that we have seen in the world today where people, sometimes in the world, represent some of the godly principles better than the people of God, but that will not be our testimony. And we want to just examine this and break it open in the Word of God and just help each and every person to be able to understand how the believers in Christ Jesus should be going above and beyond past all the things that anyone would ever do who does not believe in God or who may follow a different religion or whatever they are positioned in, they are not doing things that are more godly and that are above and beyond the people of God. We will represent God's kingdom the best. And so the first thing that I want to break open is representing the best for God's kingdom, Gianna. And so it says in Luke 17 and 15, it says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned with a loud voice and glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And so Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Right? And he said, to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Isn't it so interesting? I found this so interesting and captivating that a man who was a non-Jew came and thanked God after being healed. But nine other people who were, they knew everything about God. They followed the Judaic roots, the Judaism, and they didn't come back to Jesus to say thank you. How interesting is that? That people who were supposed to know better didn't come back to thank Jesus. But the man who was a Samaritan knew to come back and thank Jesus for being healed. You see, in the world today, it's so common that people, maybe you have felt jaded by someone who should have known better. Maybe someone who was a pastor, maybe someone who was a leader, maybe someone who was claiming to be a follower of Jesus. And I want to encourage you this morning that if that's happened to you, that same situation happened to Jesus, a person yeah. who wasn't even a chosen person. Someone who was a Samaritan came back and thanked him. Mm -hmm. I find that so interesting. And I believe that today that 
for us, we have to begin to represent God's kingdom where that's not our story. Or maybe people who think a certain way about followers of Jesus, we would debunk those things yeah. that we would make them say, hey, this person is not the same way that I've thought about the believers or I've thought about pastors or I've thought about whatever it may be. People who claim to follow Jesus, that they are the people who are the most generous, the most kind, the most good in every area. And I understand, listen, I understand that salvation is instant. You may make a decision today, okay, I want to follow Jesus. And sanctification is a process. I understand that. Right. I understand that we are all working to be better every day. I understand that completely. But at the end of the day, we have to represent God's kingdom better than anyone else. Yeah. I have seen people, Gianna, who they are in the world. No concept of God. Right. No concept. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with God in their life. Yet, they are more generous. Mm -hmm. They're more kind. They are willing to be there for you through thick and thin. Yeah. And it's sad mm -hmm. seeing someone who represents God's kingdom who's not doing that. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we want to break this open today and show you this through the word of God is because we believe and we want to encourage each and every person to be better, to live for God, and go above and beyond in everything that you do for him and his kingdom with excellence. Mm -hmm. We believe that, and we want that to be everyone's testimony. Right. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that you really make a good point. And I, I think when I think about going above and beyond as Christians, it's so important that like you said, that sanctification is a process. And so we understand that you might not be perfect and no one's perfect and you might not be where you want to be, yeah. but you're striving to get there and you're understanding that other people are doing the same. That's part of it. That's part of loving your neighbor. The Bible says that the um, second commandment is to love your neighbor. Right. It's not to rebuke your neighbor. It's not to condemn your neighbor. It's not to teach your neighbor the truth. It's not to open their eyes and tell them what they're doing wrong. It's to love them. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor, not your neighbor who's Christian, not your neighbor who's nice to you, not your neighbor who's your best friend, your neighbors, all of them. And I think that's even something that I, I've noticed in, you know, the Bible, there's this idea of what Christians look like as far as what loving your neighbor looks like, and that's not biblical. The way that we are to love other others is beyond their sin, is to pray for them, is to lift them up when we are thinking about people who are having a hard time, is to almost feel a burden for their soul, not to condemn them and make them feel judged and and like they're not good enough or that they're not, because the reality is nobody is. You're not either. That's why we needed Jesus. And I think that going above and beyond the world, the way that the world shows love, the way that the world expects us to accept our neighbors, and we have to go above and beyond what the people of the world are doing because, you know, the Bible even says in Matthew 5, um, 40, 46 is, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Mm. If you, if I only love the people who love me, what, what is the reward? There's a power in loving those who are your enemies. There's a power in loving those who think that you don't even love them, who would expect you to not lend a helping hand. And that's a part of going above and beyond as Christians 
our calling is to be extravagant and to give out love like candy. It's almost obnoxious how, you know, and there's a song that says that God's love is, um, I can't remember the word, but it's like he's always chasing after you with his love. It's extravagant. It's never ending. It's it's almost like obnoxious and ab- just so above and beyond at how evident it is. And that's how Jesus has asked us to love others as well. Right. One thing that I've learned from Gianna <laughs> that she is very good at <laughs> is um, doing things. And, and it's through the word of God, of course, that she's learned this. But giving and doing things when people don't give back, when people you know cannot reciprocate that same love, that same generosity, that same kindness. Today, you have to be able to say, I'm going to love this person. I'm going to do this for this person. I'm going to be there for this person, even if they can't do it back to me. That is going above and beyond. And watch this. When you go above and beyond, you'll see more people will come to God than you would ever imagine around you by going above and beyond and doing these things. Even when people don't deserve it, maybe you think, even when you don't feel like it, more people will come to God and say, whoa, they just did that? How do I know that? Matthew 5, 16, I love this verse. It says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. People will be around you and they'll start to believe in Jesus because of you deciding that you want to do better, even in circumstances where, you know, you may not feel like it. Doing better, going above and beyond, taking that extra step. People are going to say, whoa, that person isn't like a lot of these people who call themselves Christians. Right. They're for real. They're a believer. They're a disciple of Jesus. That is what we encourage, what we want for each and every one of you listening today to do is show that love in everything that you do so that people will say, whoa, and they're going to glorify God. Yeah. And the second thing is this, going the extra mile for everything that you do in Christ. The Bible It says this in Matthew 39 through 42, Gianna. It says this, but I tell you, not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him take your Mm -hmm. cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Going the extra mile, it, it simply just means doing the extra thing for any person in the world. Mm-hmm. Any person. You see, many people today, they don't see that. Right. They see people being so cheap with their love, being so cheap with their compassion, being right. so cheap, so judgmental. And then, you know what they say? This is what they say. I don't want nothing to do with that. Right. The truth is, they say they want nothing to do with that. They want nothing to Mm -hmm. do with that God. Because here's the reality. You may be the only Bible that somebody reads. Amen, amen. You may be the only thing, the only glimpse of God's light that someone knows. Right. And they may make a decision based off of you. Right. Do you understand that today? There are many people today who say, you know, Jordan, I don't know how you did what you did when your parents passed away, Mm -hmm. but I'll tell you what, that God you serve must have something. Right. He must have some strength. Mm -hmm. And it allows people to get curious and want to know God. And the last story I want to share and then hand it over to Gianna is this. A pastor once told me this. He said that he was in a venue 
in LA where they would go and do these performances, these concerts, um, these big events. And the pastor went up to the manager of the venue and he said, hey, who gives you guys the most trouble? Because there's lots of different mm. groups yeah. that were Everybody within does. this venue. Lots of different people that p- would perform there. Mm-hmm. And the manager looks at the pastor and, and she says, Pastor, to be quite honest with you, the people who give us the most trouble are actually the Christians. The Christians are the hardest on us. The Christians, they actually have given us the most trouble over all these years mm-hmm. and made it the most difficult. And this this place had all sorts of visitors. Absolutely. You see, do you want the testimony of Jesus to be that we were the most hard people to deal with? No. It should be the complete opposite. Right. We should be the easiest group to be around, the most loving, right. the most generous, the most kind, the most compassionate. That is what going the extra mile means. Listen, the other day, I was sitting at a Buffalo Wild Wings, and there was this man who was serving us, and I knew that he was frustrated. I knew that he was tired. I knew that he was having a hard time. I saw the people who were dealing with him and who were giving him trouble. Mm-hmm. And I made it an effort. Listen, I'm going to tip him more than most people would. And I made it an effort to, no matter what was going on in my day, be kind and compassionate. Whatever happens, I want this man to know, listen, I love you, Mm -hmm. and I want you to have your easiest customer be me and the people that I'm with. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I want you to know I'm praying for you. And I told him that. I'm here for you. Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. You see, that is going the extra mile. And that's what people need today, going above and beyond. Right. Now, Gianna? You know, I think something you said prior or a little bit earlier was about, you know, people do things. And if it's not out of love, it's, you've actually preached on this before, that if it's not out of love, it's useless. Absolutely. That if, you know, yeah, it's good to tell people the truth. And it's good to tell people, hey, the Bible is very clear that what you're doing is wrong. It's so good to do those things. But if you can't love them, what if they don't stop doing those things? Yeah. What if they never change? Absolutely. What if they never listen to you? Are you still going to pray for them? Are you still going to love them? Are you still going to text them every once in a while, check up on them? Are you still going to get them lunch? Are you still like are you still making that effort to go above and beyond and show people your love? Because if you're not, that is not what the the Bible I'm reading is telling us to do. It says bless those who persecute you. Yes, this this Bible, this the Christianity that the Lord has given us is not that. It is not condemning people. It is not rebuking them. It is not telling them every single thing they do wrong. That's not it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, at a certain level, yes, but also no. And you know who tells us this? It's Paul in Romans 14, 1 through 4. And I read this a couple nights ago, and it just, it just, felt, it just spoke to me in a different way. It says, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person believes he only can eat vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, Mm. and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Why would he say that? If you are supposed to go judge other people, if you are supposed to rebuke those who are doing something that you're not because you're deeper in your faith, if you're deeper in your faith, you pray for that person. You pray that God would bless them and give them revelation that they could take their faith to another level. Like, you don't, you don't condemn them. We are supposed to be the first to forgive. 2 Corinthians 2.10 says that. Mm. We are supposed to be the last to judge. In Matthew 7, 1 through 12, Jesus tells us what the threshold of the ability to judge is. You want to know what that is? You have nothing wrong with you. You are perfect. You are perfect. He says, if you have nothing wrong, you can cast the first stone. Yeah. And everyone dropped their stone. 
That's a really high bar. And you know what? None of us can reach it. None wow. of us. So we are supposed to be the last to judge, the first to love. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be giving. And you know what? In Mark 12, 42 through 44, it's the story about the woman who um, was in need and she gave from her need. She gave all she had in yeah. her need to the house of God. And it says that the rich gave. It says that the rich gave abundantly, but the woman gave all that she had. And she would be but mightily blessed because she gave more because it came from a place in her heart where it was truly a sacrifice. So I want to encourage you with that too, that you could be doing your best and it's not what's my best. Mm. And it's not what's Jordan's best. Amen. So don't think that because you might not be doing what other people are doing, you're lacking. Yeah. If you're doing what you can do with what you have and your heart is in the right spot, and you are praying, and you are praising the Lord with whatever you are giving, that is enough for him. Yeah. But if you are giving out of a, if you are not giving above and beyond, you are giving out of a, like you are storing it up for yourself, mm -hmm. that's not good. Yeah. So you should be the first to give to others, mm -hmm. to the house of God to ministries, to your friends, and to your family. Yeah. You should be the first to love strangers, your enemies even. Your enemies. That's crazy. And if we know these things, if we know these things, if Jesus has taught us these things, the disciples have taught us these things, why would we not implement them? Why would we pretend that this is giving us permission to be mean and mm -hmm. to condemn others? Why would we do that? Is it because you're hurting? Is it because you aren't praying? Is it because you, maybe you aren't in the spot that you want to be in? And so you're looking at what others are doing wrong? We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't because you know what? There are people in other faiths where their God is dead. Their God's not even alive. Mm -hmm. They're not active. Their God is a lowercase g. We have the God. We have the God who's alive. And you know what? Their prayers have faith. They believe their God is answering their prayers, and they're not. Mm -hmm. How much more should we go radically to God who is alive, who is the God, and pray for our brothers and sisters? How much more radically should we be obeying his word and going above and beyond to implement what he's teaching us? How much more? Mm -hmm. So I just think that it's so important that even if people can't see what you're doing, even if it's in the dark, you should be still going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. I, you don't know how long I pray. You don't know how long I read. You don't know how much I give on Sundays. You don't know what ministries I'm in. You don't know who I'm talking to on the streets in Chicago. But that's because it doesn't need to be seen. The Bible even says that. The Bible says in Matthew in si Matthew 6, he says, don't do these things to be seen. The Pharisees are praying in the temple and they're, you know, they're saying all these wordy prayers. You don't need to be seen by other people. You don't need to be seen. Right. So, you know, I just want to reiterate, you're, what you're doing right now, it may be what the best you can do. So don't, don't compare yourself to others. And if you see somebody else who's doing worse than you or maybe isn't, doesn't have as deep of a faith as you, you remember Romans 12, that that's okay. You don't, they don't need to be where you're at. You pray for them. You Absolutely. pray for them. Absolutely. And I just want to pray with each and every person who's listening right now because this is a very, very uh, touching message that we believe that each and every individual can really just be changed and live the life for Christ above and beyond where all people around would say, wow, these people really represent their king in a way that I want to represent him and I want to live for him. And we believe that that will be our testimony, each and every person who's listening. So I just want to pray right now. Father, I just thank you that each and every one of us would be like the Samaritan mm -hmm. And that we would come back and we would say thank you. We would come back and we would do the above and beyond 
in every area of our lives as we follow you. Lord, I pray that you, that you would just touch every person, Mm -hmm. that you would give them the strength to be able to do things even when they feel like it's hard, they would love. Mm -hmm. Even when they feel like it's difficult, they'd be compassionate. Mm -hmm. Even when they feel like they don't know how they're going to be able to provide, they give, and they're the most generous person around. Lord, we thank you right now. And we know that each and every one of us needs to work on this today, including me, including my wife. We can be better at going above and beyond. And we just thank you, Jesus, for giving us this message today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we are so blessed that you've joined us today. We pray that your day would be amazing, that you would live for God, that you would follow him, and that you'd have a blessed Sunday. Get to church. Have an amazing day. We love you all. Get your new book from Pastor Dan Willis, The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration today. Log on to www.danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.